Right, now is the next phase, routing the printed circuit board. Okay, before I route, I like to move my text around so that I know like what areas I can route in. So for instance, these reference designators, the J1 here, I'll place this over here, spacebar to rotate the text. For the mounting hole reference designator, I don't really want that, so I will delete that. Or you know what, I'll make it not visible, there we go. I've gotten so used to deleting things that I can just make it not visible. Let's delete it there, that's fine. J4. What's J4? At this point, I don't want to move components when I click on them on the schematic, so I'll do tools. Actually, I'll change my settings probably. Click on my settings, system navigation, uncheck reposition select components in the crossover mode. Now, when I click on J4, I know that's what it is. Okay, cool. Whoops, I just moved my component. So just do Control Z if you move something out of the way. Oh, here's another thing. Whenever I place mounting holes and connectors, I fix them. So let's click on some of them. Hold down. Uh, let's click on, just to make sure we're selecting components, do Selection Filter, turn everything off, just do Components. Then I'll do click on that component, hold down the Shift key, click on some more. Components, the mounting holes and connectors. And this one too. Then I'm going to lock them in place. Lock. Haha. <laughs> so if I try to move something, I'm not going to move that. Great. All right. Let's go ahead and go back to our filter custom. This is J4. J5 is over here. Okay. The text for J5 is all the way over there though. It's crazy. All right. See this? Trace? Hmm, that's interesting. All right, so here's the thing. My routing plan is such that I'm going to place a ground plane on the bottom of this board. Okay? So I'm not concerned about having my ground traces close to each other. I'm concerned about my signal traces being close to each other. If I was concerned about ground being close, I'd do it like this or something. Actually, this might be a... Anyway, no. Um, I could do it like this, but let me show you the 3D view. Hit 3 on your keyboard. It will look weird, right? If J4 looks like that and J3 looks like this, it looks weird. You know, so that's the most important aspect of a printed circuit board. It needs to look pretty. <laughs> that's not true. Um, but some people feel like it is, which is perfectly fine. So for right now, I'm going to select this component. From what I see here, it's actually not aligned properly. So I'm going to select it, then in my PCB tab, I'll unfix its location, move it a little, and then fix it again. Great. Also here, you can put your connector here, but I won't do that. I know this is supposed to be routing, but I just want to make sure my text is good. When you click on certain text too, you can reduce the size of it. I like this size though, so I'll keep it as much as possible. Make these not visible. Or R2. I will... Mm, I will put the R2 text here. Generally, I like my reference designators being all on the same side so that it's consistent, so that I know and the, the designer knows or whoever's looking at it knows that I know... Um, so they can just have confidence that when I say J1, J1 refers to this component and not this component. You know what I mean? So if it's on the lower right for this connector, I put it on the lower right for this connector too. This top overlay, I'm going to make this invisible and move this one. 
Also for connectors, if you place the text too close to them, there might be something in the 3D where it like it doesn't show up as well. So be mindful of that. Like the connector may have a little bit of a lip on its bottom side where um where it might hide the reference designator, the silk screen. For R2, I place it right here. Generally, we don't want any silk screen going over pads. That's a no-no. Okay. All right. SJ1. I promise this is routing. <laughs> this, this is routing. I mean, this is not routing, but this is setting me up to do well in the routing. Okay. Notice I hit the silk screen. I mean, the top overlay, not the dot designator. For LED2, that's this one. And for LED1, that's this one. These LEDs are kind of close to the edge. If you can, if you can manage, try to keep parts not too close to the edge. I would say maybe a hundred, 20 to 100 mils away from the edge. Maybe 40 is a good sweet spot. Great. Our reference designators are good. So let's save. Now for the routing. First of all, I'm going to do the ground plane copper pour on the bottom. Okay, so let's select. Nope, no, not that one. We'll select polygon. So let's do a polygon pour. And for my settings, I wait for my settings to show up. Hit tab. And first of all, let's select the net. The net, which comes from the net list, is GND or ground. The layer I want it on will be the bottom layer, which is the bottom copper. This layer is defined from the stack up. That's why we needed to do the stack up first. Not bad. All right, let's get started placing this. Hit the plus. And just, here's the thing. You can make the ground go around here from edge to edge from the very edge, but maybe don't do that. We want our ground to come in by at least, let's see, X is in that direction. I'd say at least 50 mils less than the board. But if we do that, the ground is going to get punched through by this hole. Which is fine. Yeah, let's just do that. I'll place my ground line here. 50 mils. Like mechanically, if we end up with ground, copper slivers, which should not happen because it, the settings should remove our, um, Copper shapes that are less than a certain size. But just in case, just so you know, uh, it's possible to cause little slivers of copper to be formed if you're not careful. All right, when you click, make the last connection, right click to complete the shape and then you right click again to get out that mode. And see here, see how it uh, makes the shape. We can also modify this a little bit. Like you can bring that in. You can bring that back out. It's nice. Yours may not re-pour automatically just like that. There is a setting you can use. Oh, uh, yeah, and I forgot to vertically bring that in by 50 mils. So I like how you can set the shape and then bring it in as much as you want later. Cool. You know, this ground may not even need to go that far south. Ah, whatever. Symmetry. In the name of symmetry. <laughs> but no, really. Functionality should take precedence over everything. Not just, not aesthetics. All right. This ground copper bore is nice and all, but it's really solid. Um, it's this bottom there. I think I'll either hide this. Like I can hide the bottom layer. Or excuse me, panels. 
view configuration. For our view options, we can go in here and this gets really involved. So for for shapes or polygons in general, I'm going to change the transparency. I'm going to up the transparency a bit to like 70% maybe or 60%. So see how the ground transparency changed automatically? So I'll keep it like that. And let's get rid of this navigator panel, shall we? What you'll find with Altium shapes may not automatically re pour. So to fix that, I think is you would go in settings and then PCB editor. And here we would see re pour polygons after modification. I keep it check marked because I like my polygons to re pour automatically. Click apply, then OK, just to make sure. All right, cool. That's enough about polygons. The reason I did this is because the having a ground plane, it has an extremely low impedance. It's not zero impedance. So and I know it's called ground, but it's just a return path. It's another trace. It's a big trace. That's all. That return currents can follow through. Return EM fields can follow through. Uh, when they return to their source. So now, this is useful because low impedance is fantastic. And what's cool is with this plane, I don't have to worry about making the ground connections close. That's the point. This, this through hole component, it gets attached to the copper through the bottom of the PCB automatically. And therefore, it's connected to ground. Notice how the air wire disappears, right? Great. So that's copper pour. Now let's go into placing tracks. You can do control W. In other software, the tracks may be called traces. Hit tab on your keyboard. You can define the via hold sizes. See if you can get away with the smallest via you can use with for your manufacturer. The hold size is 28 thousandths of an inch. It's kind of big, but that's okay. For the trace width, I would say Unless it's a power net, don't go wider than you have to, really. Uh, the reason I say that is because uh, it's just to reduce EMI fields. What I've seen is in general, you can make the traces wider, twice like twice as wide as the current you need, but what's whatever. I hit tab. Let's change this to the top layer, shall we? Plus. On, oh, okay. So since I changed it to top layer while I already started routing, it does a via. So let's right click to get out of that mode. I'm still in wire routing mode, so I'm on the top layer now. Good. Let's do this. Place the traces. Oh, I'm getting an error on, on this side. What is this right click and violations? Clearance constraint between pad on top layer. Okay. So hmm, let's go to our design rules then. Oh, oops. Clearance. Ah, ignore pad to pad clearances within a footprint. So let's click apply and then OK. Great. That's gone. Now let's continue routing. And before I continue, the, the mill grid, like the grid that I work with, um, I will change it to make my life easier. And also, I'm going to merge these two tabs. Right-click, merge them. Right-click, save. View, fit board. All right. Before I continue routing, change the grid to a G, maybe a, maybe a five mil grid. All right, Control W to continue routing. 